Thank you. 
us worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. Together, God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that has enslaved us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh, oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. In your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy One is in our midst. Oh, come, let us worship. Venite is Psalm 63. I'll read to the asterisk, and you please respond. Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. It is a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place. And I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live. And lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed. And meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper. And under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. The Holy One is in our midst. O come, let us worship. Psalm 15 is on page 599 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read it together. Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not keep contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejoicing. And he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Please be seated for the first reading. Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my loved, my fair one come away. For now the winter is past and the rain is gone, it's over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, 
the time of singing has come, and the voice of the little dove is heard in our land. The fig, the fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Oh, my dove, in the cliffs of the rock, in the coverage of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes, that trim the vines, for our vine vineyards are in blossom. The word of the Lord. Canticle 19 is on page 94 in the Book of Common Prayer. I'll read to the asterisk, and you please respond. Canticle 19, The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds have they that have you have done. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord? And sing, sing the praises of your name. All nations will draw near and fall down before you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this. My beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all solidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers. Who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, and, and going away, immediately forget what they, what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
well surprised we're not going to do a dwelling in the Word. Uh, although you could all say what you want to say as I go along with this thing. Uh, picture a cold, snowy Sunday morning in January. It's still dark outside. A mother gets up, knocks on her son's door, and says, good morning, it's time to get up and go to church. And she hears, oh. So she figures she'll give him a few more minutes. Five minutes later, she comes back, she does the same thing, and she hears another, oh. Okay, she starts making breakfast, this time she goes into his room, and she says, come on, let's get up, we're gonna be late for church. And he says to her, do I have to? And she says, yes, you do. You're the minister. <laughs> Skipping ahead 65 years, because I heard that at the beginning of a sermon when I was in my 20s, probably when I was in the same mood as a young man in bed. <laughs> do I have to go to church? We're skipping 65 years, because last Sunday, I tuned into the church in Holy Cathedral in Washington. If you've never done it, it's a beautiful, beautiful Episcopal church. Uh, last Sunday, the sermon was given by one of their staff members, one that was on the younger side, and he started off by saying, when I was a teenager, I didn't go to church very much, but when I got into college, I suddenly went to church every Sunday. And one of my friends said to me, what are you going to church all the time for? God doesn't take attendance. And he said, when that was said to him, it gave him a lot of thought. What am I really going to church for? So this is really what he said with some of my stuff thrown into it also. He said, number one, when we go to worship, we worship God. If you look up the word worship in the dictionary, it says reverent love, adoration, and devotion to God, the ceremonies or prayers by which this love is expressed. When we do that, we get ourselves renewed. God will meet us in prayer and communion. We are face to face with God and we leave changed. That is, if everything is going right, we pay attention, we leave this church changed, and it lets us get into this crazy world we live in, trying to live the history of the Bible, hopefully, trying to keep the Bible central. We share the very presence of the Lord in the great mystery of communion. And he pointed out the Episcopal Church, unlike other denominations, does not get carried away with how this great mystery happens. We simply enjoy it. And you know right now we, we haven't done communion for about a month since Lynn's been away, uh, and I'm personally looking forward to it. Uh, so right now we're just dealing with all the wonderful prayers that we get to see. But in communion, we're fed by God, and we meet him in this world. We meet it in the world when we go out and we help the poor and the hungry and the sick and the people in prison and if we're kind to our neighbors and if we're tolerant. That's how we're meeting God in this world. When we come to church, we also get the words for eternal life. We hear it almost every single Sunday. I'm a gardener and I love to garden and I know when I garden, it's not just planting seeds, because you got to water them, you got to weed them, you got to trim them. Uh, so to me, what we do when we come to church, we kind of water our soul, and we feed our soul constantly. You know, when I'm driving to church now, I see people jogging on bikes, walking really fast, and I think to myself, well, that's really great. They're strengthening their body. Me personally, when I come to church, I'm strengthening my soul. 
gives me the guts to go out and, as I said, this crazy, crazy world that we live in. If anybody wants to talk about why they come to church, now's your shot. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> I also think it's a good habit. I also think that something about the communion of all of us together. You know, it was wonderful during COVID to sit and Zoom a church service in. But to me, there's something about just all being here together and seeing all your, your masked faces, but your <laughs> friendly faces, and, and you just kind of get the spirit of the community of saints. I'll, I'll join in, we'll see. <laughs> we yeah. were actually, my husband and I were talking about this just yesterday, about whether uh, it's more to be the good person or more about coming to church, and how is it okay if you go to church, but you're not a good person on the outside world, and you know, still talk about people badly, and or is it you come to church and, uh, you know, it, do you have to be in the space? And, um, you know, for him, he works on Sundays, so it's hard for him to come on Sundays here. But um, I, I feel the same way, that it's just seeing everybody and everybody's energy, and, and I feel like I pay attention better than I did on Zoom. And uh, so I, I feel the same way, that I, I just feel better when I'm here and uh, not just, you know, doing it on the outside. So I, I feel the same way. Right. I guess we all agree, right? <laughs> that's why we're here, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here. And, you know, uh, I look forward to, in September, when we go back into the, the big church and when we get to have communion. Uh, I think that's, as this gentleman said last Sunday, that's why we come to church. And as we just read, um, as James says in today's reading, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for the orphans, the widows, and their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So that's what we're trying to do is keep ourselves sort of unstained by this crazy, extremely secular world that we live in. Um, amen. Amen. <laughs> We'll all stand, please, and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Nearly as you are able, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us to forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Make it to your people with lasting peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And make your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And in your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. 
God, who gave to your apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and to preach your word. Grant that your church may love what he believed and preach what he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will, with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, a prayer for missions. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Parish Prayers. Lorraine Tessou. Almighty God, Father of all mer mercies. Together, please. Tell us to get together, please. Let's read this together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we are your unworthy servants. We give you humble thanks for all your goodness and for all your kindness to us and to all, all whom you have made. We bless you for our congregation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but all of all for your inevitable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of the glory. And we pray and give us such awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up of ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, okay, so we have the peace and the announcements. Um, are there any announcements that anybody would like to make? I just would thank you, thank you. It wasn't the inspiring sermon. Yes, 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 we are thankful, Wilson, you did a beautiful job. Thank you. Uh, the one thing that's not in the bulletin that I'd like to announce. On September 25th, Bob LeClaire 
Jim Millar, our former organist and choir director, and three other people are going to give a concert here. Um, a wonderful quintet, uh, and it, it's we give these people the benefit of uh, Center for Food Action, or one of the food banks in the area that's the neediest. So it's a Saturday evening, early Saturday evening, and there'll be a reception that follows, and that'll be in the, in the main church. So please keep that, and of course you know the um, movie night is coming up pretty soon, and that's listed in the bulletin, um, and lots of other wonderful events. Oh, right, yes, thank you. So now um, we are going to uh, pray for all these people. And I, I was told that we don't have to put them all in, but I, I only took a few names out that I know are doing better in their situations. So um, in um, fear of leaving somebody out who really does need prayer, I'll just read all the names if that's all right. Vivian Chan Costa, Charlotte Moore, Jack Kronberger, Suzanne Costa Braun, Sidney Reners, Deirdre uh, Karner, Robert, uh, Robert Jacobs, uh, Paul Sorvino and his wife Dee, Constance Aviela, Brendan Howe. Jim Brady, Richard uh, Ann Driela, Emmett O'Malley Fisher, and the next row is Kathy Ethel. And after I read this, uh, I'd love for you to mention anybody that we don't know about that you know of that, that needs prayer. So uh, the next row is Kathy Ethel Dan Hassinger, Joan Lucchiani. Nikki McGannon and family, LaVon Saders, Rose Castell, Randy Volko, Maureen, Dennis Allen, Pauline Henry, Jim Hoskis, my dear friend who's at a senior home down south, Caroline Thompson, Marie Jaxel, Norma Arroyo, uh, who's recovering from surgery and doing very well. William Blackwood, William, I'm sorry, William, William Blackwood, Mary Cicado, Chris Lapidus, Lorenzo, Jemima, Jeff Brandberg, Chris Jefferson, Marianne, Paulina Azaza, Linda Jaxel, Cora Bilderbach, William Blackwood, Ron Clark, Bob LeClaire, Justin Taylor. Oh, and I do want to mention Dick Weir, too, who's coming along nicely. Uh, Cameron Taylor, Cam, Cameron, oh no, I'm sorry, Justin Taylor, Cameron Adams, Deborah Price, Brett, Brett, M. Zag, Zagdick, Zadig, Doug Hancock, Mike Myers, Lily Lodge, and Frank Tanuzzi, and, uh, and if we keep Angie, who spoiled me in our prayers to, who lost her sister. So we give thanks to God. Oh, and I want to ask, do any of you know of uh, anybody else who, who needs prayers? The people in Afghanistan and Syria and Haiti, people um, who are in the wake of Ida, Hurricane Ida. Thank you, yes, thank you very much. Prayers are very much needed this time. Yes, anybody else? We give thanks for the birthday of Nolan Greenlee Greenle and the wedding anniversary of Sembarasi and Ida Liam Faro. We remember before God those who have died 
and that one is Oliver Vivian Nike. And uh, as I mentioned before, I think she was called his sister. And uh, the altar flowers are given to the glory of God. And Here. Yeah? No name. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the diocesan cycle of prayer. Um, we pray for the clergy, warden, vestry, and people of St. Andrew's Church, Harrington Park, St. James Church, Pakistan. And the Anglican cycle of prayer, uh, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. And we pray for our companion congregation, uh, the Church of Santa Maria, Santa Margarita, Colon, Pan Panama, the Right Reverend Julio Murray, Bishop of Panama, and Central America, the Reverend Raymond Toledo, priest. Well, we'll say the concluding sentence again because we sort of got it in the wrong place. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We also did the peace in the wrong place. Announcements. Any more announcements you got? Thank you. And the week before that is the uh, movie on the lawn. It's a, loop, a, a Disney release. It's movie called Lupa. L-U-P-A. I guess the young people know that. It's free. It's on the lawn. You can bring friends. We're not allowed to advertise it in the paper. And I think there's a, a license restriction. We'll pass the word around to your neighbors. I think it's free. It's on the lawn outside. Bring a chair and enjoy the movie. So that's the 18th of September. Great. Thank you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
is to be in church and I forgot we forgot to do the sharing of the peace so before the blessing thank you all good to see everybody the wisdom of God the love of God and the grace of God strengthen us to be God's hands and heart in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity Amen. our last hymn is 556 verses 1 through 4 Rejoice, ye pure in heart.
Jesus. Amen.